Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino tells you how to play Disney Speedstorm in a video taking place right after the early access launch so some of this may or may not apply if you're watching sometime down the road if they change some stuff. This game has some deceptively complex systems both on and off the track and I know I was confused by a good chunk of it at first so I wanted to lay out some fog clearing information especially because it's a game with disposable currency and I always worry if I'm wasting it on things that aren't worthwhile before I know what's going on. The game also doesn't tell you about some important race mechanics in the starter circuit so I'm going to go over those, but first let's start with an overarching view of what Disney Speedstorm is. It's a surprisingly good kart racer, if you ask me. I was expecting this game to be kind of whatever, but after playing it for like seven hours on the first day, I can say it's super competent in multiple ways. It feels like a mishmash of a bunch of different kart racers, like Crash Team Racing, Nitro Fuel, Mario Kart 8, Mod Nation Racers, or pretty much any game with a kart in it, but the action is smooth and technologically sound. And the variety is more varied than I would have even imagined in terms of some of the stuff they did, like the different character archetypes and how they use different weapon setups. You'll start the experience off in the starter circuit, which is like half tutorial, half campaign, as it focuses on certain tips and different race challenges that see you learning some mechanics while they sweep a few under the rug, and unlocking characters at a pretty slow clip. There are currently 18 playable characters on this first day of early access, and after my aforementioned 7 hour grind, I have 7 of them. Characters are unlocked by acquiring racer shards specific to that character. Generally, you need 10 per character, and after you unlock them, you can earn more of that racer's shards to increase their rank and improve their abilities. They're unlocked piecemeal, a couple shards at a time for the most part, scattered across different challenges and progression points. Going through the first three chapters of the starter circuit will give you enough racer shards for access to Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, but you'll also get a few shards for other characters like Mulan and Meg scattered in there. Chapters 4, 5, 6, and presumably any others they decide to add require you to have unlocked the character they're centered around before you can do them, and you'll probably have to complete some limited time events or seasonal challenges to get those characters, or get lucky with the dreaded gotcha loot boxes and pray you get the right shards in there. Disney Speedstorm does not shy away from its free-to-play foundation, which is to say it's setting up big time for microtransactions galore, but as of now, you can't buy in-game currency with real money, and the game doesn't jam the shop's existence down your throat with a bunch of begging screens, or get your progress by making you spend to keep doing whatever you're doing. More on the shop mechanics and stuff later though. Back to the starter circuit, you'll want to complete a good chunk of this right out of the gate so you can not only unlock multiplayer, ranked or otherwise, but limited events and the current season tour as well. The season tour is like the starter circuit on steroids, with more stuff to earn, better rewards, and themed around a specific thing. Currently it's Monsters Inc, so you're working on earning challenge XP to get racer shards for Sully and Mike Wazowski, and your other themed stuff like their upgrade materials, more on that later too. Progress and challenge completion in the season tour is tied to the Golden Pass, which is a seasonal battle pass you get free tickets to activate when you first buy a Founders Pack with the game, so I'm not sure what it's like when you don't actually have the Golden Pass activated, but I imagine you just get less stuff. Doing challenges in the season tour races, like stunning two enemies or boosting five times, gives you Golden Pass XP, which unlocks valuable rewards every time you clear a tier. Limited events can be anything from standard races to multiplayer leaderboarded time trials, and there's always good things on the line there, sometimes including racer shards for otherwise hard to get characters. These refresh on a daily basis, and there's always a bunch going on at once. Some you might have a day to complete, others a month and a half. Now for the multiplayer. There are two modes for multiplayer, ranked and regulated. Ranked is where your character's stats and progress matter, and you'll definitely be at an advantage or disadvantage against people who have worked more or less on their racers. Level 1s going up against level 10s, you're gonna feel the difference when you're doing everything you can to try and outspeed someone who just has better stats than you. But even so, ranked multiplayer is one of the only consistent ways to earn some racers shards and each racer has their own unique multiplayer rank. Rising in rank will unlock multiplayer tokens, one of the three currencies, because for some reason there needed to be three currencies. You can spend those on certain store items like skins and car parts. Regulated multiplayer takes the potentially in the future pay to win BS out of it, making everyone have the same level of character specific stats so there aren't any advantages. You can get multiplayer tokens here too, but this mode seems to have weekly progression that you can burn through so it'll eventually be pointless until it resets. Both these modes can be done with parties of three, which is awesome, and then if you want to invite full eight-player races of friends or viewers, you can go to private track and create a room or join one with a room code. Now that we've talked about all the modes, let's get into the racing mechanics, because there's a lot going on here. You can drift by holding LT or whatever button it is for you. I got it on Steam and I'm using an Xbox controller. When the tires shine blue, that's your cue to let off the drift for a speed boost, and as far as I can tell, you don't get bigger boosts for holding it longer, so better to do multiple rapid drifts than a big long one. 
As you race, you build up a storage of manual boost in the bar at the top of the screen by drifting, performing certain actions depending on what driver type you are, and at seemingly random times when you didn't do anything. Pressing the boost button when it's full lets you let off that steam and go fast for a decent amount of time, great for taking shortcuts that otherwise slow you down with rough terrain, or catching up to someone with a short range attack handy. Something the game never tells you outside of the control settings, or if it did I missed it, is that you can jump either by pressing the equivalent of square on a PlayStation controller, or flicking the right analog stick up, which is how I like to do it, and you get good height for jumping onto higher platforms and grind rails, or if you do it on arrow designated ramps, you can perform an aerial stunt and land with a speed boost. Speaking of grind rails, that's a thing, either drive onto one or jump if it's kinda high, and then use the left analog stick to balance yourself so your character doesn't tip too far in either direction. If you maintain balance long enough without faltering while on the grind, you'll get a decent speed boost, otherwise you'll probably lose speed by being on there as opposed to the ground. If you're already boosting while you're up there, you don't need to balance, but you won't get anything extra. Another thing they never tell you is that you can sideswipe opponents, which if performed accurately can ruin their whole day by flicking the right analog stick left or right. It doesn't cost anything to do, there's virtually no punishment for missing, and it's kind of OP, especially if you get someone as you're both going off a jump. Sideswiping can destroy people, knocking them off the track or into obstacles or turning them around depending on the angle you hit them at. If you're running up on someone, there's no reason not to do it, it has the potential to get very annoying. It's classified as a dash, that's what they refer to it as, so you can also use it to like quickly dodge away from a mine or something, and because it has almost no lag and doesn't even slow you down, there's no downside. There are eight different basic weapons in the game, not including the signature ones. Bomb, boost, cloak, fire, shot, hack, shield, and rush. All of these have different variations depending on whether you use them, charge them by holding the button, or shoot them backwards by pressing down before you fire. Some don't have backwards functionality, like you can't use shield backwards because it's just a shield you want it to only protect your ass seems inefficient i'll consider ranking them all when i see how good their higher tier versions are because as your character uses more and more racer shards to rank up their star count their main weapons get buffed in power level two or their chosen crew can affect it as well which we'll talk about soon bomb is a lobbed bomb that explodes on contact with the ground and does an aoe or you can shoot it backwards as a mine that explodes when someone runs into it or you can charge it to throw it further it has some aim assist capabilities like it seems to get thrown a short distance if an opponent is closer to you in the front than if they aren't. It's a good weapon, pretty effective. Boost just gives you a full bar of boost instantly, and also creates a second bar if you already have boost while you do it. It's a great pickup, does just what you want it to. And if you charge it, you can get a lot more boost at a bit of a slower rate, but not too slow, so it's always worth charging unless you're already boosting, because then it doesn't seem like it really works. So if you're not boosting and you're at less than full boost, charge it, but if you are boosting, just use it to keep boosting. Cloak makes you invincible and invisible for a good chunk of time so nobody knows what you're up to or can do anything about it. Perfect for sneaking up and sideswiping people or not getting hit by dudes whose cars are on fire. If you charge it, the effect lasts less time, but when you reappear you explode and hurt people in a small area. Fire might be my favorite. It's simple but flexible. Regular fire engulfs you in flames for a long time, so if you touch anyone they get stunned, but it doesn't speed you up inherently like a star from Mario Kart, so you want to use it with boost to catch up to people. If you shoot it backwards, you do like a Tron fire trail behind you that stays on the track for a second and stuns anyone who drives over it, great for stopping people from passing you. And if you charge it, you just do a big AoE that hits anyone close. Shot is a ricochet disc that bounces off walls a few times and stuns whoever it ends up hitting. If you throw it backwards, it travels a lot slower, which can be good because it can take up valuable track real estate for longer, and if you charge it, it shoots slowly as well, but also homes in on the nearest person in front. But it might fizzle out before it gets to them if they're too far away. Hack is basically the same aerodynamic properties as shot, but when it hits someone it mirrors their world, which requires them to steer in the opposite direction from how it looks. This can be annoying, but a helpful tip is that whichever direction you have to turn while the world is mirrored, keep turning that direction as the effect wears off. If you're turning right on the analog stick and the effect goes away, keep holding right to keep making that same turn. That's because the weapon doesn't actually flip your controls, it just flips the screen, so don't be fooled. Shield is a shield. It blocks damage, congratulations. Or you can charge it, which makes it an offensive thing instead. It won't block damage, but you can use it to run into someone and stun them. And lastly, Rush is just a speed boost. Use it to get one biggish boost, or charge it to get three smaller dashes in a row, which can cover a longer distance and is probably better on extended rough terrain. Weapon effects can be stacked too, like you can use the shield to defend yourself and then pick up the fire ability, use it, and have both effects active at the same time. Every character also has a signature ability they can use when they hit rank 2 
twin stars. Mickey gets a musical speed boost, Belle can summon furniture to make people stub their toe, and Donald can just run an invincible train on anybody close enough to feel the wrath. Some are definitely better than others, but I'm still down here in the rank 2 situation, so I don't know how much better any of them might get with an investment. Let's talk about racer stats. Everyone's different out here, and the person you think you might want to main from the outset might have a driver style you don't prefer, or someone else might have a better weapon selection. There are four driver archetypes, speedster, brawler, defender, and trickster. These loosely determine what kind of weapons racers can pick up. Speedsters are obviously going to prioritize speed, so all of them, as far as I can guess, have either rush or boost as one of the four basic weapons. It also determines how your character earns boost. Some ways of earning it are consistent, like from drifting and drafting and hitting people with weapons. But different classes get a boost to certain boost-boosting actions. Speedsters get boost from running over boost pads. Tricksters get extra boost from drifting and boosting out of the drift. Brawlers get extra boost from stunning people with attacks, and defenders get extra boost from drafting, riding right behind other opponents and catching all their farts. Archetypes also affect sideswiping. Speedsters get a speed boost when they land one, although if it's not a direct forceful hit, the opponent isn't going anywhere and can just do it back real quick. Tricksters confuse people when they land one, so it mirrors the world like hack. Defenders get a free shield when they do it, which nullifies any potential counterattacks. And brawlers straight up stun people like they got hit with a weapon, which is amazing or annoying depending on whether you're the one stunning or getting stunned. All racers can level up their stats by acquiring checkpoint flags and then assorted themed materials like alarm clocks for Mickey Mouse related characters or teapots for Mulan. As they grow in level, they'll need more and more upgrade materials of higher tiers, which is very Genshin-esque. And each level will raise a preordained stat by a little bit, like top speed or handling. As if it needed to be more deep, racers can also have crew slots filled with crew members from their properties if they find enough crew specific shards, like Monsters Inc. racers might get CDA agents as crew, or Mr. Waternoose, and Bell can get Cogsworth, among others. These crew members confer bonuses to different stats and sometimes raise the power level of certain weapons, and the rarer ones can make quite a difference. So, what's worth buying in the shop? Racer shards are a given, but they're often so expensive I'd only do it if you really want to grow that particular character. Of the three currencies, the blue tokens seem like the hardest to grind, and their supply might be limited. I could definitely see those being the premium currency later, especially since when you get a new character they give you the option to use those tokens to buy their racer shards up to rank 2 right out of the gate and unlock their signature move. I got 4,000 blue tokens for buying the standard edition, and I don't remember what I bought with half of them, but I know I regret it. Hold on to those until you see something you really want. Multiplayer tokens aren't very plentiful either, but you have a consistent way to grind them. I'd save those for a skin you really want to buy outright. You can open a multiplayer mystery box for 500 multiplayer tokens, which has one of over 325 potential items in it you might get instead of what you actually want. Or you could save up 3500 multiplayer tokens, which is the equivalent of 7 boxes, and just get a rare skin you'll appreciate immediately. Loot has three rarities, common, rare, and epic, so rare is like the epic of this game, and epic is the legendary. I don't know how much an epic thing costs, because none of them are in the shop right now for multiplayer tokens, but there's some in blue tokens. All three tokens seem to buy the same things in an overlapping kind of way sometimes, so I don't know how they parse that. Seasonal tokens you'll get a lot of. Currently yellow tokens with a Monsters Inc. symbol on them, so you definitely use those to buy anything good in the shop. Lastly, for anyone thinking about buying the game who hasn't, I want to discuss the Founders Packs, what's in them, and whether it's worth springing for a deluxe or an ultimate edition. Standard costs you 30 bucks American, 50 for the deluxe, and 70 for the ultimate. The standard gives you early access to Disney Speedstorm, kind of a given. It unlocks Mickey and Donald as racers. It gives you an additional racer unlock of your choice from a select list, which contains Baloo, Belle, Beast, Elizabeth Swan, Shang, and Mowgli. It gives you 4,000 blue tokens, two golden pass credits, aka free golden pass twice, exclusive founding member racer and cart skins that look awful so don't bother, and an exclusive founder's motto and avatar so you can tell people you're a founder, I guess. The Deluxe Edition, for $20 more, has all of that but also gives you Mulan right out of the gate and 7,000 tokens instead of 4. Blatantly not worth the price hike, especially because I bought the standard and am currently one shard away from getting Mulan on day 2 anyway. Plus she has a limited event going on for the next month where you're just gonna get her regardless if you're watching this soon after I uploaded it. The Ultimate Edition, for $20 more than the Deluxe and 40 more than the standard, gives you everything in the standard and Deluxe but with the addition of Captain Jack Sparrow and Hercules as immediate unlock plus 12,000 blue tokens instead of 7 instead of 4, and 3 golden pass credits instead of 2. Also it says you get cart wheels and wings for Donald Duck's cart. 
yeah, just get the standard. You'll get these characters eventually anyway. I'm main Donald right now, and even I'm not interested in whatever his card stuff looks like. If you wanted me to get a deluxe or an ultimate edition, you needed to put a metric buttload of racer shards in there, but I wouldn't have known they were valuable because I didn't know what they even were until I was already balls deep in the starter circuit. But that's how to play Disney Speedstorm. I'm really enjoying it right now, and I hope it keeps me engaged in the long run like Disney Dreamlight Valley didn't. Like, share, and subscribe. Watch all my other videos with two pairs of glasses and a thinking cap on, and I'll see you guys next time.